More bad news for President Biden's latest attempt at a student loan bailout. Yeah, after trying to wipe out about $39 billion in debt last week, and a new model from Penn Wharton predicts that the president's new proposal to his income-driven repayment plan will end up costing taxpayers nearly a half trillion dollars over the next 10 years. Queen John Pierre issuing this spectacular non-answer when pressed on the issue today. Watch. The reason why we were able to do this, the reason why we believe uh, this is being done in a, a responsible way, and let's not forget, uh, we can afford to give middle class Americans, middle class families, a little bit of breathing room, as you hear from this president over and over again. And so, and it's because the progress that we have done, we have done to, to make sure that the deficit is coming down. For more, let's bring in Kentucky Congressman and House Oversight Committee Chair uh, James Comer. Uh, the deficit is actually going up uh, this this uh, this year, uh, Congressman. But I, I can't even begin. The heavy blinking kind of gives her away. What say you, sir? Well, I mean, the Supreme Court's already ruled on this. The president doesn't have the authority to do something like that. Congress appropriates money. Sean knows this very well. Uh, the president does not. We've already been through this once. This is another stunt by Joe Biden. And you mentioned the, the national debt. Joe Biden doesn't care about the debt. Uh, this is something that uh, throughout his whole career in Washington, D.C., he's kicked the can down the road. And the children and the college students, the very people that he claims he's trying to protect in this, they're the ones that are paying the price for the Democrat spending spree. Yeah, and listen, anyone with half a brain will tell you they know what they're doing. They're trying to break the system so they can actually rebuild the system into something we wouldn't recognize. But I want to look ahead because this week, two IRS whistleblowers are set to testify before your committee, the Oversight House, uh, Oversight House Committee, um, on Wednesday over the handling of the investigation on Hunter Biden. What do you expect to learn, Congressman, uh, from these two whistleblowers? Well, these two whistleblowers, uh, they were the most credible, uh, highest ranking IRS employees in the criminal investigation division. This is the A team yeah. for the IRS. We are going to hear from them and we have a lot of questions. As you know, Sean, we've obtained bank records. We've obtained information that shows that the Biden family created an extensive number of shell companies or fake companies for the sole purpose of laundering money. And we get the term launder from six different banks that file reports with Treasury that said the Bidens were laundering money. So we finally have experts that are going to testify under oath as to whether or not laws were broken. If so, how many, which laws. And we're also going to see whether or not the government has stepped in to obstruct a formal investigation if there was a cover up by uh, high level officials in our federal government. So I think this is has the potential to be a very informative hearing for the American people. Well, we know the identity of Gary Shapley. Will the identity of the second whistleblower be revealed? Will the American people get to see him and learn who he is or she? Absolutely. Uh, and we're calling him Whistleblower X. Uh, he has provided uh, under under oath a, a transcript. Uh, I've read the transcript where he sat with the Ways and Means Committee for multiple hours and answered questions. Now the American people are going to get us here firsthand what these two credible IRS whistleblowers have to say about what laws, if any, were broken and what was done to obstruct their investigation. Now, I think it's going to be very important because the most of the mainstream media did not cover the Ways and Means transcript. Mm -hmm. Very few people in America have read that. I've read it's over 400 pages, but it's going to be much more easily digestible to see on TV what these whistleblowers have to say about what exactly the Bidens were doing and whether or not they paid taxes and whether or not they got off scot-free. Yeah, and it's one thing for you to tell me they're credible, but when I get to see them with my own eyes testify and we can judge, right. America can judge for themselves, that is so important. We'll be tuning in. I want to get your take on this, though, because White House Press Secretary turned pundit Jen Psaki is drawing backlash from implying that you've been compromised by foreign actors during an interview with uh, fellow uh, Oversight Committee members, uh, Jamie Raskin, watch this and I want you to respond. So how concerned are you that James Comer was the chairman of the committee, was knowingly, unknowingly working with, co-opted you know, co by a foreign agent? I'm just concerned that 
um, the House Oversight Committee, which has a very proud history with, you know, Congressman Waxman as chair, uh, the great Elijah Cummings of Maryland as chair, is suddenly being compromised in a really serious way. Jamie, this is so tiring. They did this to Trump. Nothing was there. They're saying this to you. It's, 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 it's almost a joke, but they make these accusations. How do you respond? Are you an agent? I want to know. <laughs> yeah, no, I am not an agent. Uh, you can look at my bank accounts. I disclose my taxes. I've never received money from uh, foreign agents all across the planet like the Biden family has. But look, they've always gotten away with just making stuff up and the press doesn't ever fact check them. Thank you for fact checking them. And at the end of the day, what is one thing that I've produced in this committee that, that they dispute? Because we have the Biden bank records, we have the Biden bank violations. We're fixing to hear from IRS employees who are right. leading the charge investigating potential crimes. So I wanna know where have we said one thing that wasn't true and wasn't backed by evidence? Before we go, Congressman, how do you think the Democrats on the committee treat the IRS whistleblowers this week? Well, it's, it's going to be interesting because they haven't been uh, very nice to these whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. You know, the Democrats on the Oversight Committee claim they've always got the backs of the federal employees. They always are filing these whistleblower protection bills. But when it comes to whistleblowers that blow the whistle on Democrat wrongdoing, then right. they have a completely different attitude towards them. So hopefully they'll treat them with respect because we want whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. We welcome whistleblowers to come forward and tell us about waste, fraud, abuse and mismanagement in the federal government. When you've been accused of being an agent of a foreign state, you know you're over the target. Congressman Comer, we'll be tuning in this week. Thank you for joining us, and we appreciate your good Thanks. work. Thanks for having me.